All right, YouTube. So today's video, I am making the last video of 2021. Uh, and before we get into the video, I just wanted to get some things out of the way uh, on what to expect in this video. So if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe um, and, uh, you know, also like the video if you like it. Uh, if you can watch it to the end, I would highly recommend that you do that. Um, I think you're going to find some very interesting things in this video. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, this video is going to be slightly different where we'll actually talk through... Um, some of the cameras that I've actually used a lot uh, in 2021 um, and then I'll pick like two or three maybe some might have a little more uh, shots um, you know that that I really like from the camera um, and then I'll put that up there for you guys uh, to take a look at uh, <clears throat> towards the end so I'm not going to put the pictures in line the reason why is because it breaks that you know that that connection when when two people are actually having a conversation or multiple people are having conversations uh, <clears throat> now you're just looking at another screen and really hearing the words but you're not able to relate and connect so we'll we'll talk through it in order and towards the end try to remember some of the things that i've talked about um with uh, the specific cameras um and then uh try to remember uh that conversation as you look through some of those images uh, towards the end of the video so Having said that, like I said before, please subscribe. It's very, very important in 2022 um, because we are going to build a lot of things and also uh, bring up the maturity level of uh, our subscribers from a photography perspective and get them to the next level. Uh, <clears throat> so they're not always um, looking for bigger and better gear. Rather, they're looking for you know the opportunity to do bigger and better things with their skills that they have. So it's more about sharpening other skills and actually putting them to use. Um, and then uh, <clears throat> we'll touch on some of the some of the issues that the marketplace actually has um, from a chip shortage perspective and how you can actually use that to your benefit. So let's talk about that. So let's get right into this video. Um, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to run down some of my favorite cameras that I still continue to use. Uh, <clears throat> this is not an exhaustive list. It's, it's some of the ones that I really enjoy using. Not saying I don't enjoy some of the other ones, you know, I have lots of cameras. Um, <clears throat> so we'll go in and actually start with um, a very old classic, which came out in about 2001, 2002, that time frame, which was the, the 1D classic um, from Canon. Um, this is the original 1D body. Um, and this body was about uh, almost 6,500 hours back uh, in 2001. So when we see like a Sony A1, um, when we see an R3, when we see an R1 pushing into, um, you know, six to $10,000 categories, I'm not sure why people are having a heartburn because, you know, I still remember <laughs> buying this back in the day for that kind of money. So if you took this and you multiplied it to today's money on how much it's worth, it's probably well over 20 grand is what the camera is worth, right? But canon nikon sony all these people they're not charging you that so uh <clears throat> the prices have stayed the same technology has come tenfold um so you know what uh, when you're looking at a six thousand dollar camera um and you're constantly wanting that in a two thousand dollar camera uh i would i would highly recommend that you up your skills um so you can maybe make some more money from photography and you can buy uh some of the <clears throat> upper echelons of, of cameras um if you're unable to, you know, uh, just go out there and actually buy it. Uh, <clears throat> one thing I do want to mention, it's not about what you can buy. Buying versus affordability are two different things. You should never buy something if you cannot afford it. Let me explain. Anyone can buy something on a credit card today. The question is, can you afford it? Which means, do you have disposable income which, where you're not going to take money away from your family and, and put them at jeopardy just because you want, you know, a $6,000 camera, for example. Uh, <clears throat> so you guys are smart enough. I don't need to tell you how to do that. You guys can figure this out. Um, use your best judgment when it comes to that. So don't fool buying and affordability to be the same thing because they're not. They're very different. Okay, so now that that's out of the way, uh, <clears throat> I'll tell you a little bit about the 1D Classic. Four megapixel. Um, you'll see some images towards the end of it. Uh, you'll probably fall in love with some of it. They look almost like a painting. Um, the pixel size on this is about 13 to 14, which is almost four times as greater 
uh, than any 24 or, or um, well, not 24, um, more, more like your, your uh, 30 and, and 60 megapixel sensors and 50 megapixel sensors you have. These pixels are massive. So the color transitions and shifts are just beautiful, right? So it just has a beautiful um, painting-like look to it uh, when you get out of these. Um, is it fast enough? Yeah, it was eight frames per second with full AF tracking back in the day in 2001. Um, still works. You can still shoot birds. You guys have seen pictures of me shooting actual birds with this thing too. Um, <clears throat> and you'll probably see some of them uh, towards the end. So that's the first one, the 1D Classic. This is a 1-3 crop on this one. Um, and then uh, I wanted to talk about one camera that's not on the list from a photo perspective. Uh, and and uh, I just, it doesn't mean that I don't like it. Uh, I love it. Uh, I still own it. Uh, <clears throat> it just, I just didn't pick it as one of the ones that I wanted to actually showcase in this video. Uh, <clears throat> this was the full frame counterpart to the 1D. Um, this is the 1DS, uh, the original 1DS. Uh, both of these actually had the hybrid white balance in them. Uh, so you see this little thing here on each one of these cameras. It actually reads the ambient light and room temperature and the white balance out of these is absolutely pretty incredible. Uh, on what they could do. And eventually they got rid of this um, in, in the later models. Um, <clears throat> nonetheless, this was the first CMOS sensor. Um, the 1D Classic that I just talked about, which was four megapixel, was actually a CCD sensor. So this is a CMOS sensor. And back in the day, this was 11 megapixels. So 2002, 11 megapixels was a big deal. The screens were very limited. It was limited to what you could do. It could only go up to ISO 6. No, uh, not even 1600. It was ISO 1250 or, or something, something in there. I don't even remember. It's, I think it's 1250 uh, is the highest it goes. Uh, <clears throat> this camera was $8,000. Um, I still remember I was uh, sharing with uh, one of you uh, on the phone this week, um, getting in the car with my dad. Uh, I had saved up for about two years uh, for the 1D, 1DS, um, the original um, and driving from Maryland to, to New York City, because back then you only had like Crutchfield, you had JNR Music World, and then you had like B&H. And Adorama really wasn't, it was there, but just not quite as big as B&H. So we used to get B&H catalog. So Canon was running $600 vouchers uh, on this. So I actually ended up buying um, this particular 1DS back then. Um, for seven thousand four hundred hours instead of eight thousand seven thousand nine hundred ninety nine, it was six hundred hours off at B and H. So, when people are constantly complaining, right, that you're not getting enough for your money, you have no clue. Um, you you you're living in a world of entitlement. Um, I'm living in a world of pure experience, and I've been able to shoot so many incredible things with these cameras. So, you know, could I sell them for pennies on the dollar? Sure. But is it going to give me back the sentimental value that I have of these? Because these are fully functional units. They've been to Canon CPS every six months. Um, they're fully functional. They're, they're fully been taken care of and they're awesome. They work flawlessly with no issues. Um, <clears throat> and no, they didn't get a firmware update every three months. They got a firmware update maybe once every 10 years. Um, so... Getting those out of the way, let's move on to the next one. Uh, <clears throat> the next big one um, that I'm going to talk about is, uh, is the complete opposite. So we're going from 4 megapixel straight to 50 megapixel, which is a 5DS. Um, I had the 5DSR before. Uh, I did run into some issues with Moray um, because I do shoot a lot of fashion and runway type of things. Uh, so 5DS serves much better, less issues with Moray, same sensor slightly less sharp but you know you can just move the sharpness slider in two seconds and, and change it um, remarkable uh, camera of its time um, this is the camera that really um, started the megapixel war uh, for for a lot of people uh, to be able to have something that was portable like this in 50 megapixels and then obviously trailed with uh, you know uh, the sony a7r was hovering around 36 this came in at 50 and then the r you know, two came, which was a 42 and then 40, uh, state of 42 and then R4 uh, from Sony came in, which was 61 megapixel, which uh, topped this one. 
Um, nonetheless, these are fantastic studio cameras. These are not for high-speed bursts of shooting birds in flight. You could, but as long as you understand the limitations of five frames per second, I, I was preferring using this more in the R5, honestly. Yeah, it doesn't have the dynamic range. Yes, it does not have the autofocus system similar to that, but it does have the 1DX autofocus uh, system in here, which is good enough for me. And five frames per second was fast enough at 50 megapixels. I didn't need to um, you know, mess with the R5 files where you have thousands of them, and now all of a sudden you have terabyte after terabyte of just files. Then you have to go through that uh, and put huge um you know taxing on your on your computers to do that so 5ds um remarkable uh you can probably pick one up for uh under 1500 hours today it's a hell of a deal if you're really looking for a great deal with a great resolution yes it does have a mirror in it uh, and the mirror never heard anyone before for the last 20 years so just because mirrorless is here doesn't make them bad they're great options okay so next one down is um, an ultimate classic uh, <clears throat> probably has uh, uh, got more to its name than uh, any other APS-C camera in the world. Um, and uh, aside from some of the Nikon ones, um, and that would be the 7D Mark II. Um, 7D Mark II is one of a kind. The 7D Classic was uh, also one of a kind. Um, and uh, there's just... Um, it's an absolute workhorse, workhorse and, it, and it works. It's, it's APS-C. It gives you the reach, um, 20.1 megapixel. Go figure. Same 20.1 magic number. So keep that in mind as we continue this conversation. So this video is going to be slightly longer. So just hang in there. But I just wanted to show you uh, <clears throat> the cameras that I shoot a lot um, and uh, what I do with them. So I do shoot with these. So 7D Mark II, truly remarkable. Enough said. I don't want to really you know, uh, drain this video with, with just talking about it because I could talk for hours on this. Um, this this particular camera is legendary. There's no other brand that has another APS-C, um, you know, sports and wildlife type camera that, that's even close to what this camera has done uh, in the past decades. Um, hopefully, you know, it's a, a new RF version or one from, from Nikon is on, on the way. Uh, that would be a good addition to, to the lineup. So... Next one down is uh, the R5, uh, which I've actually gotten rid of. Um, so I will share the photos with you. And, and I just shared with you, I prefer using the 5DS more than the, 5, uh, more than the R5. And every time when I had the R5, R6 side by side, I kept on gravitating more towards the R6. Uh, and I'm going to share with you why. Uh, <clears throat> so the next one up is the R6, um, which is this guy right here. Um, so the R6, why is that? 20.1 megapixel, plenty of resolution. Um, remarkable, absolutely remarkable in low light. Uh, and especially when, when light's dropping at uh, sunrise and uh, are actually not enough of uh, at sunrise and then light dropping towards sunset. Um, the camera is truly remarkable. I've shot shots up to 12,800 with no issues whatsoever. That's what's made me wanting to try this uh, F11 lens, uh, and I'm actually pleasantly surprised um, as what it can actually do. So R6, enough said about that. You'll see the, the pictures. The R6 pictures are going to be a lot more. Uh, I truly have enjoyed uh, the time with it, and I plan to shoot uh, the R6 more and more and more uh, into 2022. So let me know your... Actually, you know what? Let while this is going on, please leave your, your favorite ones that you use a lot in the comments below uh, as we continue to, you know, uh, evolve in this video. Um, so the next one up is your M6 Mark II, which I actually put back. Uh, so M6 Mark II, let me grab it for you. Give me one sec. Here is the M6 Mark II. Um, fantastic camera, 32 megapixel APS-C. We just talked about the um, 7D Mark II. This definitely outperforms the 7D Mark II when it comes to frame rate. It's 14 frames per second. Um, it definitely can't outperform the buffer on it. Um, but if Canon were to take this sensor, put it into an RF mount, and give it about 15, even 15 frames per second, 
I don't think any other brand would be able to even come close to it uh, as a as a 7D Mark II replacement um, on the, on the mirrorless side of the house. Uh, they would have a home run and a absolutely truly true gem. Um, this particular camera is pretty remarkable. So I'll share uh, one of my favorite shots from it. Uh, I haven't shot it too much. Uh, I plan to do more with it um, in in uh, 2022. Um, and uh, so, you know, if you want to see more from the 60 Mark II, uh, let me know and, and we can do that. Um, and then uh, as, I, as I move off of that into um, the Sony realm of things, um, two of my ultimate, ultimate most favorite cameras are obviously the A9 II, uh, that's here. Um, and this is paired with the 200 to 600. Um, I don't know how much more um, you need me to talk about um, with this because I think the less I talk about it the, the better off it is because um, these cameras don't need a lot of um, explanations on if you know what you're doing with it you they can be deadly the problem is is most people are using them blindly without even learn, ever reading the manual how to use it um, and then they don't get the right results and they're still lusting for more and more and more um, I truly love this camera. I'm glad that it doesn't have all of the video nonsense in it. I don't care for it. Uh, I don't need it in here. Now, would it be helpful to have really nice 4K 16 here so I can just push a button back here, start recording the video as I'm shooting stills like the R6? That would be the only thing I would care about. Uh, but, you know, I don't need it to shoot log. I don't need to do all this other stuff. Uh, just because I, that will help me make videos uh, more efficiently for you on the Sony system. And I think it's kind of hard to do on this. It's not quite as good um, as what the R6 can do uh, in the in the 4K60 department. It doesn't even shoot 4K60, but you know you, you get the gist. Um, so take a look at some of those shots from here. Uh, A92 also has uh, more than two shots. Um, and last but not least, uh, one of my uh, <clears throat> most uh, treasured cameras that I. Um, fall in love with it, it takes me back uh, um, you know back to the film era every time I shoot it uh, it's the RX1R Mark II uh, from Sony um, I, don't, I don't know how I can put this camera forward uh, for a lot of people this camera is 42 megapixel full frame with paired with a 35 f2 Zeiss sonar lens if you were to get something similar to this in an interchangeable uh, full frame type of situation, you are not going to get it for about $3,000, this quality out of it. Um, you're going to pay a lot more. But the beauty of this thing is it's so small. Um, it shoots uh, video up to you know 60 frames per second in, in, in uh, 1080. Uh, and it has one of the most beautiful viewfinders in here. It's like 2.3 million dot or I don't even know what it is, but it's a Zeiss one and it's awesome. And you guys have seen all the different accessories that I have for this. Um, truly awesome. Um, it actually has a manual aperture ring up here. And some of the shots from this I'll, I'll put there for you so you can take a look. Um, I absolutely love this camera. Every time I go on a trip, um, this is one that <laughs> makes it into the bag before anything else. Um, and I truly enjoy it. So um, I, I know this video is a little long. Uh, I hope you have enjoyed the video. Um, if you if you did, give it a like, uh, and I hope uh, you'll plan to subscribe uh, because uh, we will get into some real topics uh, in 2022. And the topic is not about how I can get your credit card out of your wallet so I can get you to buy stuff. It's more about how to keep the things that you have and maximize them to produce better and better results with what you have. Uh, we're all about uh, empowering others to become better rather than empowering others to buy better stuff for their, you know, camera bag. I mean, you can do that uh, if that's what floats your boat. But I think if you enhance your skill set <clears throat> more than you enhance uh, what's in your bag, uh, I think it's going to take you a long way. And regardless of the camera gear that's been handed to you, you'll produce amazing results. And that's the idea. So we want to breed better photographers, not better gear uh, for, um, you know, uh, just for the sake of it or, or satisfying the egos out there. So um, let me know your thoughts on, on the video. Uh, thank you again for all of your support um, for many, many, many years. Um, 
And uh, this is uh, a wrap on 2021. And uh, I hope, uh, you know, we will meet again uh, in 2022 very soon uh, with a lot more things to talk about uh, and uh, a lot of uh, different kind of content. Um, and uh, hopefully you'll, you'll find value in, in wanting to uh, stay with the channel and, and bring more folks like yourself back to the channel uh, and build a community of actual photographers rather than, you know, uh, gear, gear junkies. Um, we are all gear junkies. Uh, we all get gas. We all get excited. Nothing wrong with that. But doing that every single day, every single time. Oh, someone in the rumor mill said they're going to, they just filed patent for five more lenses. So how does that change your life? That's for Canon to make money on, not for you. That's for you to lose money on. So the more you start, it, it, the idle mind is a devil's workshop, if you think about it. If I leave you alone and I give you one of these and I tell you, go and find some interesting things to look at, you'll probably come back with things that you never knew about and frankly, they don't matter to you and you probably will realize that you end up spending money on things that you don't need. That's what happens because you're not concentrating on the skill and the art of what, what is it that you really need. Um, so it, it's becoming more the want and the need is uh, not being looked at and need mean I, I would really need and like each and every one of you to enhance your skill. So when we're sitting here at the end of 2022, you can sit here and see and, and even comment or want to come onto the channel and say, at the end of 2021, I didn't know these, these five things in photography and I've continuously worked on it. And look at my shots, how much better they look. To me, that is going to give me more money in my pocket of satisfaction than anything YouTube or any of the affiliates can ever pay me. So your success truly is, is, is where I'm really after. Am I... Am I going to get to the point where, you know, if you, if you succeed that, you know, it doesn't impact me? No, it does. It does impact me because each and every one of you, I don't want to leave anyone behind, anyone that truly wants to learn. But if you're all about gear all the time, yeah, we can talk about it. But all the time, guys, it gets old, right? It, it gets boring. So let's keep it exciting. Keep it alive. Um, go out there. And like I always say, create your magic. Be nice to each other. Uh, and, uh, you know, Happy New Year to each and every one of you, and thank you again for all your support. And sorry for the longer video, but I hope you enjoyed these, these uh, images uh, as, we, as we wrap up 2021. So stay blessed, uh, stay good, uh, and, and uh, create some incredible work uh, in, into 2022, uh, and I look forward to building this uh, together with you guys. Uh, and uh, thank you again for all of your support. So I'll talk to you guys soon. Thank you. Thank you.